Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial on our little gingerbread man. We've modeled him, even mapped him, textured him, started rigging him. It is time to actually take all of our efforts and bind the skin so that we can get this guy ready for animation. If you're new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software and let's go ahead and rig this little gingerbread man. All right, here he is and it's full glory. Let's add, let's go ahead and bind him. We have all these joints. So let's grab the main joint, which is the pelvis joint. And down here at the Mel, Mel script, I'm gonna type in select hyphen, which is flag HI, which stands for hierarchy. And that will select all of the joints. After that, let's go ahead and select everything. We need all the frosting, the body, the buttons, the bows, the eyes, the brows, you name it, we need it. Let's, um, and that should do it. Let's go to rigging, skin, bind skin. And that's it. The rainbow means that your character is now rigged. Now it's not gonna be great, right? So you can see that there's a little bending there. And if I grab this, I'm sure there's some pulling. Yep. So these are the type of things that we're going to need to fix as riggers. So let's fix the head, which is going to be the easiest. So as you can see, as I pull this down, it's pulling the head, right? And we're going to go to our vertices and I'm going to turn off everything but the geometry. Then I can click and drag and grab the selection of, of vertices. So we're gonna go to Windows, General Editors, and we're gonna go to Component Editor. And there's a bunch of tabs and the one you want is Smooth Skin. Now, the thing is, is like, we want the head to be manipulated by the head. We don't want it to be manip manipulated by the arm. So let's go ahead and get rid of things like the clavicle, the shoulder, the wrist, and just go ahead and say, drag it all the way down to the bottom and basically say zero. So then we can take a look and see if that fits better. Now, the question you want to ask yourself is, do you want the clavicle to affect the head, right? So let's go to object mode. Let's grab the clavicle. Oh, that's right. Ha. Huh. Select the curve. Here we go. Oop. Right. So it's got a little bit of, of manipulation there, but you can get the idea. Make sure everything's zeroed out. So now we can grab the arm and then we can move it around. You can see that the head and the face and stuff like that's also being manipulated. So I'm going to fix that as well. But right now, another way to do this is to tell it that, hey, I really want the whole head and the face and everything to be controlled by just the head joint. So what we are going to do is actually grab our vertices. Again, I'm going to turn off the controller, select the vertices that we want to manipulate. And I'm going to be using painted weights instead to tell it I want 100% of this head to be manipulated by the head joint. So let me grab these 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 vertices. That looks good. I'm just double checking to make sure. Make sure you don't grab anything you don't need to grab. There's plenty of geometry here. So, whoops. Make sure that you just grab what you need. Uh, all right, cool. So, what we're going to do is right click, just right, regular right click, go to paint, skin, weight tools. And you're going to see that we have kind of like an outliner with color. So, this basically shows you that the pelvis is manipulating with white, is uh, manipulating that much geometry and the right hip is doing that. And if I keep going all the way up to my head, my neck and my head, you can see that the head is manipulating that much and the neck is manipulating that much. So I want actually all of this to be affected by the head. So the easiest way to do this is to make sure that everything is at one and then I'm just gonna hit add and then flood. So everything is flooded with 100% of the neck. Similar to that, let's grab these guys and I'm going to grab the vertices. Grab them all. Boop. And then we're going to do the same thing. Right click, paint weights. Here's a neck. And again, I'm just going to click on flood. It's just, e the, that's probably one of the easiest way to do it. So now if I grab the head again, grab the controller and I twist, you'll see that it actually affects the head. Now there's a little bit of pulling and things like that there, but if I grab the arm and I move it, you'll see that it's actually doing a fairly good job. So that makes me happy. All right, let's see. Let me zero this back. We can grab this and kind of twist and you know, it's, it gets a little janky right there, which it's normal because it's going to um, be pulling. But part of the 
one of the things that I recommend is that if you are going to twist a character like that, I have to make sure that you twist the full. But let's see if we can make this a little bit better. So again, painted weights. Let's go down the spine. So this is spine one. And usually what I like to do is go to smooth and just kind of hit flood. And that kind of smooths out the flood. It just helps smooth out the painted weights. So let me go to number one. Again, I like to hit flood. You can see that there's something here that's not being manipulated, right? It's getting pulled pretty good. Uh, let's see. Let's go to four flood, right? So that's kind of helping it. The clavicle flood. And to be fair, the clavicle should probably not have that much there. So I'm going to go to replace. I'm just kind of reduce the value here. I just don't want it to be manipulated by the clavicle that much. All right. And same for here. I don't need it to be manipulated that much by the shoulder. And again, you could always go to smooth and then flood, clavicle, flood. And that should give us a better look. So let's see. The spine seems to be the one that's not as strong. There it is. So you can see that it's a little dark area there. Let me add some influence here. I'm going to reduce my, I'm going to increase my, there you go. Just add a little influence just to tell it, hey, you are actually supposed to bend. You too, by the way. Just a little bit. And again, I like to go to smooth and then flood. So that's going to help with the transition. So up here, let me add a little influence. Again, I'm not adding too much. I just want to add a little bit so that it bends a little better and a little smoother. And again, flood. Whoops. <laughs> Don't do that. Go to smooth and then flood. There we go. All right, let's see. Maybe spine one needs a little help. Let's go to add a little influence there. Flood smooth flood 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 it's a reason why it's called painted weights All right, cool. Let's zero these out. Zero, zero, and zero. Cool. Let's grab this one. That's the pelvis. So that basically, this is the one that moves. From, there you go, a little dance. <laughs> cool. And then this one controls basically the full body. So if you wanted to do a little up and down, that looks good. Again, let's make sure that everything's zeroed out. And then let's see, take a look at the feet. Seems to be actually surprisingly well, which is good. Yay. All right. The little pinching up here at the top, as you can see by the little guy here, look, almost looks like a belly button, but let's go ahead and fix that. We're going to select these vertices and let's take a look at the painted weights. It gives us a little bit of a better view. So it's being affected by the pelvis, the hip. But to be fair, I don't think it should really be affected by that. It should be affected by spine one for sure. So let's add a little bit of influence here. There we go. And maybe a little bit there too. But let's smooth it out, make sure everything's okay. And I'm going to replace this with zero. So flood. Spine, 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 flood zero. Spine one and two should be the biggest influence, basically. So just double checking to make sure that these don't have any. So I have a replaced the value of zero and flood. So I'm hoping that's going to help with the pinching. And it did. Great. Okay, cool. And all right. I think I have a rig that's basically painted weights completed. So that's, it's not done yet. I still need to fix a couple of things, but let's save it. Don't forget to save your file. All right, now when we're gonna give this to an animator, there's a, several things we don't want them to do. We don't want them to scale this <laughs> and nothing happens. We don't want it to accidentally turn this off, right? So let's lock and hide some of these. So we're gonna select these. And basically a lot of these, probably almost all of them do not require scaling. And let's grab I'm not going to grab this one because I might need to scale, but let me grab that one, open that up, and then we can grab 
all of these and I make, I'm avoiding the IK handles, right? So just the controllers. Then what I can do is grab the scale and the visibility and then just say lock and hide selected, right? So some of these though don't require translation like this unless you want it, but I personally don't. So I'm gonna go through and basically just lock and hide this one. This one doesn't really need rotation. So these guys, I'm gonna go ahead and lock and hide this one. Right, so just kind of go through and find out what you want to lock and hide. So I want to lock and hide that one. And again, these are just rotations. I don't really want them to stretch, right? It wasn't built for squash and stretch. So I'm going to go ahead and lock and hide this as well. This one can be moved up and down, so that's okay. So I'm going to leave that as is. And then let's grab these controllers. And same thing, I don't need them to rotate. So lock and hide. For the feet, I do want them to translate and rotate, so I'm leaving them as is. And then this one, I'm just getting rid of the lock and hide of this visibility. All right, cool. Next, we want to make sure that people don't accidentally grab the animators, grab anything that they're not supposed to. So we are going to be hiding everything, but basically the geometry. So the first thing we're going to do is select this one, and we're going to create a new display layer and just basically call it the controllers. Right, so if they need to hide it, they can. For the joints, we're going to group it. This is going to be the joints. And I'm basically going to select all of these and lock and hide them because I don't want anybody to grab them. And then I'm also going to have another group. So control G, do not touch. <laughs> it literally means don't touch it. So if anybody goes to the outliner, please don't touch that. All right. Now animators are only supposed to be selecting controllers. That's the trick here. All right, let's hide some of these uh, IK handles. So control H, control H, control H, and just make sure that all of them are hidden. Again, they should not be, they shouldn't really touch them. So it's really important that they're hidden. So nobody accidentally grabs them. I am going to grab the joints group and um, or the pelvis and do a control H, which will hide all of them. So not only are they hidden, the joint groups can't be selected and the do not touch it. Tell them, hey, don't touch it. All right. So that means that they can just grab this and move them around. Let me grab the clavicle. This one should just be translated. I don't I'm not going to really rotate them. As you can see, it doesn't really do anything. So let's select both clavicles and lock and hide the selected. All right, that looks like a pretty clean rig. Uh, let's go ahead and start grouping everything. Same thing with this one. I'm going to group it. This is the geo. And we also do not want anybody to select this group, right? So I'm going to grab the geo group and place in the do not touch. And I'm also going to grab the geo group and add it into a layer, which is going to be the geo layer. I'm going to reference this one. Right. So by reference means that they can't select it. They can say, whoops, <laughs> that's funny. Um, by re referencing it, oh, these things have a, some sort of translate, it seems. And I'll show you how to unlock it so you can, I can fix this. Might have been an error from earlier that I didn't catch. But um, you know that the good news is, is that they can't select it. Oh, looks like I have an IK handle I didn't hide. So let's make sure those are hidden. Control H, Control H, there we go. Whee. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, for these guys. So I locked and hit it, so let's undo it. To do that, we wanna go to edit and we're gonna go to channel control. And this is where basically everything is keyable and locked. So if I want to unlock it, for example, my rotate, you can just move this and you can see, and then you can also take this and move it, which basically makes it non keyable, right? That's kind of like the idea. So let me move this one. Let's look for rotate and then we can move it and then they show up and you can see that these are locked. So if I grab, let's say translate, and then move them to the left, they become locked. So that's kind of like how it works, but it's just faster to right click. So it looks like these are fine. So I think I just need to um, unlock these. 
right click control vertex and then move it uh, let me see that looks pretty good okay and as long as it works that's what's important let's grab everything group it together and this is um gingerbread all again you want to make sure nobody accidentally grabs these so you want to lock and hide select it on every attribute so if you select it you can't accidentally move it right that's the whole point Perfect. Okay. Coloring. Let's grab this, open up the attributes. All right. So we're going to go to our shape. We're going to go to object display. And over here we have a drawing override, which will enable the override. And then I can change the color. So if you want to, you can choose the index or you can change it to RGB, which is like a new thing. So if you want to, you can make all the ones in the center purple, right? So I can grab this one, enable overdrive, RGB, can do purple if you think that color is nice again I'm just grabbing colors you can if you have like um, a reason for choosing specific colors you're more than welcome to uh, I'm gonna keep this one in index and find the yellow there's a, always a really nice looking yellow and I think it just really stands out so I'm gonna do that for this one too so I'd like that yellow there we go uh, usually for left, uh, I like to choose blue. And for right, I like to choose red. It just really stands out. But don't choose green or white because that's those are selections. Just a couple more. Blue and red. So it's just easy to see these. Ta da! Character's done. How exciting. Now it's ready for animating. This one you can enable to whatever color you want. Oh, that green's terrible. That was not the green I wanted. Let's see, I wanted that. There we go. Something like that. Or let's pick something fun. Maybe I don't recommend green because it looks like it's uh but let's pick maybe teal. There you go. How cute is that? <laughs> you can have fun with it. So the idea is that when uh, somebody sees this, they know immediately that these controllers are for the left side, the red is for the right, and these are basically neutral center, and these control the ma major part of the spine. Me, All right, cool. Let's get rid of this reference image. Don't need it anymore. Can delete that. It's up to you if you want to keep the sky dome, but basically this object is ready. Rig is done. Next tutorial is how to animate it. All right, so in the next video tutorial, let's do a simple animation for this little guy so he can say hello. Hello. And we'll see what this guy's gonna do. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't really come up with an idea for an animation just yet, but I'll come up with something so I can show you how to do some simple animations with this rig. And therefore you can display it. We'll render it too, just so we can display it nicely in the in your portfolio. So if you're using this as a reference, you you can actually, in your portfolio, you can explain that you modeled it, textured it, rigged it, animated it, render it. You are responsible for it all. So really fun. Hopefully you're enjoying the process. I definitely am. Can't wait to get this little guy to come to life. If you, in, you learned a thing or two and enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. That just kind of helps me out a little bit in the YouTube logarithm to just kind of move my videos up a little bit in the list. Please share my videos if you find if you feel that somebody out there could use a tutorial on rigging or modeling or anything, please share my videos. That would be amazing. Also, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find a ton of references for you. You can find downloads, you can find ebooks, uh, 3D models, and so much more. And while you're there, take a look at my e-courses if you want to deep dive into Maya. Those, these e-courses are for you. They will teach you how to model, UV map, texture, complicated objects. Also, we, we dive into lighting, rendering, and light blocking, and so much more. So check it out, academicphoenixplus.com. 
Again, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful one, and I will see you next time.